I'm really sorry we couldn't start the first time because I think there there has been a misunderstanding concerning the no the way it should be sent. Know. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I gotta get link to join in there, but I was trying to find it, couldn't really find it. But here we are, we're live right now. Yeah, teacher Adam. So I've been following you actually for a long time. I guess maybe for six years. And um, I've been doing this thing of inviting teachers around the world for like uh, two years now. And like mm -hmm. just a couple of weeks ago, I was like, uh, I came across one of your videos and say, why I haven't I thought about inviting this amazing teacher? I've seen the things you do. Can you say the and, name of the uh, video again? Why I have to work? Yes. The name of the video again, it was lagging a little bit. You came across one of the videos, it, it was called... Yeah, one, yeah, one of the videos about uh, pronunciation, I guess, uh, explaining one of the yeah. pronunciation rules. Yeah. And um, yeah, and um, I, I'll let you, I'll, let, I'll give you the floor to uh, present, us, uh, present yourself to uh, the people watching. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are people who will be watching now and there are other people more people will be watching after uh, when we finish this live because we're going to save it anyways on Instagram. Just a yes. simple note, like many people in Morocco are now busy watching. I don't know if you're a fan of football or not. Yeah, the but soccer competition, the Arab. Yes. Uh, yeah, the there is a very important match today, tonight, between Algeria and Morocco. Very important, you know, this okay. uh, two neighbor countries playing against each other. It's... Uh, <laughs> So, uh, who is Teacher Adams? Like, uh, okay. tell us about yourself. Uh, let's say that my name is Adams. I'm 35 years old, and I've been teaching for the past 16 years. Uh, I, I'm 35, but I started, you know, 16 years. Yes, I was 19. And uh, prior to that, I was a wrestler, mixed martial artist. I did sports. And then after that, I had many injuries. The second most important thing to me was teaching. So, I was like... Mm -hmm. I want to do teaching when I retire from sports. So I started when I was 19. And, you know, to me, teaching English is not just like a job or teaching a language. It's a way of life. And you have mm -hmm. to tell the people this thing because you've got two different types of learners. You've got people who take courses and study and stuff, and they actually don't improve. And you've got those ones mm -hmm. who are like improving and getting better. Number one, it's the teacher, you know, you have to love mm -hmm. the teacher, so that teacher would make you feel interested to learn, and that's one of the things I wanted to focus on, and that's to be entertaining, to be interactive. If you are a descriptive teacher, you just get in class and you teach and everything on mm -hmm. board, you know, that's what they get in school, but people want to love the process, so I focused yes. a lot when I started on being entertaining, uh, having fun with the students, and, you know, making things fun. Uh, and as I was saying, there are other students who love the process and they learn fast. One of the main reasons to learn fast and, and to improve is to all the time learn every single day. So the second thing mm -hmm. I have in mind is like, I want to give them unique content. So I focused on vocabulary, expressions, idioms, uh, linking sounds, pronunciation, grammar mistakes, which pretty much tells them like, okay, there's nothing missing in there. So I try to focus on everything. However, I all the time introduce this thing in the beginning when I say to students like, number one, the most important thing you have to focus on is your pronunciation, is your accent. Mm -hmm. If you speak Yeah, that's English, what I love the first, accent. that's what attracts my attention the first time yes, is exactly the pronunciation, good. your oh, American you accent, point. yeah. If you speak English and you're fast and you have vocab and mm -hmm. stuff like that, your accent is not American, it's not British, it's not even close. Mm -hmm. People are gonna be like, oh, okay, he, he speaks English. But if your accent is on point, whether it's American or British or even Australian or a little bit close mm -hmm. to it, that, people look at you and say, wow, well, you know, I like that. That's cool, that's really good. Yeah, and, even and, if you have like, if you don't have much vocabulary, like yes, in mind, yes, you sound sure. great because oh, your pronunciation yeah. is you, is you, your you accent see is... a lot of students as a teacher you see a lot of students mm -hmm. who actually pronounce well but they stop a lot and they don't have vocab but those people have more confidence in themselves than the people who study mm -hmm. a lot of vocab but don't really focus on the accent so mm -hmm. I, I really want all the people to understand from the beginning from day one your accent your pronunciation is really important and that happens through teaching them different kind of rules because people hate fanatics yes. and 
you know, the symbols yeah, yeah. and stuff. So I try different ways. I don't know one of the videos if you've seen before, I create letters. So C-I-A-L is pronounced shawl as in special, mm -hmm. special yeah. commercial. That makes them understand that, oh, it's wrong to say special. Oh yeah, that's wrong guys. Because the C-I-A-L shawl. I tell them another shawl. rule, yeah. like, you know, when you have anything mm -hmm. that has N-A-R-Y in American, you would say nary, like dictionary, uh, station, dictionary, yeah. visionary, luminary, and that's also easy to understand and memorize. So creating mm -hmm. those kind of rules, starting with them with my students on day one, it gives them confidence and it gives them this idea that, whoo, we got to forget this old English that never was correct mm -hmm. and start focusing on this new direction. And they start focusing when they read C-I-A-L. Oh, that's S-H-O-L, shawl. Oh, N-A-R-Y. Oh, that's a long A, nary, you know? Oh, C-O-N. Mm -hmm. We don't say conversation. We say conversation. We say concentration. Mm -hmm. So you tell them, don't say con, say con, con, yeah. and those kind of things in there. So that was one of the things uh, that I really stressed on, has been stressing on, will continue to stress on. And to me, as mm -hmm. I said, teaching is not just a job. I love it. I do it in a different way. I try to make things funny. We sing songs, karaoke. I don't know if you've seen that before or mm -hmm. not. I have yeah. Used. yeah. We I've seen one of the videos where you uh, sing have students yeah, sing I along mean, with them. I tell them, I'm not a singer and you're not singers. Mm -hmm. We're doing this yeah. for fluency. We're doing this for quickness, guys. That's what we want in mm -hmm. there. We want to be as fast as this American singer. And instead of saying, show me the meaning of being lonely, you would say, show mm -hmm. me the meaning. Now you're linking everything and they get it. And some people don't believe they would sing, but they would sing in the end. Eventually everybody mm -hmm. succumbs. Uh, and we do some acting role plays, presentations, and also a, a clever teacher should not just plan a lesson, you should plan a real life topic. So how to make them speak and about what? Oh, movies, mm -hmm. sport? That's what everybody speaks about, you know what I mean? But let's get topics yeah. out of the box, you know? So you would say, as an example, self-confidence versus arrogance, you know? Uh, saving money, problem solving, those things that people you know, tend to speak about, but they lack vocabulary, and they lack things. I try to enrich that to them by starting a conversation, teaching vocab, fixing pronunciation, mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, you know, like, that's it. But I love my job. I love teaching so much. Yeah, but that's great. Um, it's actually one of the, uh, one of the things that attracts my attention, my attention in teachers in general is being creative and um, creative for someone may be different for how, how people will see creative, like um, using songs, for example, in the classroom, other teachers, mm -hmm. they are not into this method. They have mm -hmm. other ways to, to do it. Maybe, maybe also they, it can work for them. Like they can have yeah. their own way to, to create a positive environment for students to learn. Um, but just since you focus more on pronunciation, I would like to, um, to ask you this question, which I, mostly received about pronunciation and accents. People, they uh -huh. tend to confuse the two, pronunciation yeah. and yeah. accent. Uh -huh. uh, what, what is really the difference? I usually ask this question to all the teachers I invite. So we, we have, uh, are they the same? Are we speaking about the same thing here? We have three things. We have a pronunciation thing, and we have mm -hmm. the accent, and we have the dialect. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So Of course. Speak about the accent, now let's put a country in there. So I got the American accent, I got the British accent, I got the Irish accent, the Indian accent, whatever. But like, mm -hmm. of course, we're not telling any students to go learn that accent of Indian. No, like we want you to learn American or British, but that's for the accent. When it comes to pronunciation, it's basically how you get this accent out. Because it's all about, you know, just saying something. No, it's about my lips, my tongue, my teeth, how I move the entire thing, how I get out the word. That is the pronunciation. And also we have a dialect. Like when you go to the States, you have the North accent or the North dialect. Yeah. And Southern, you know what I mean? Like you hear all It's like the dialect is people. regional. It has to do with the with the region where you came yes, from. Yes, exactly. So you go yeah. to New York and stuff, you're not mm -hmm. going to hear people say the R sound. So it's like, oh, bro, mm -hmm. it was like amazing. And you go down yeah, yeah. south, it's like, oh, really? No, it was really hard. Oh, you know, like, 
It's different, so that's yeah. The dialect in there, but it's it's all about the beginning. Where do you want to stand? Do you want to stand on the American ship or the British ship? But let's speak facts here. Mm -hmm. Do you watch as students? Do you watch more American movies or more British movies? Yeah, that's, American, that, that's it. Okay. People watch American more. Yeah, yeah since the American they, media is dominating. They are, yeah, they are yeah. Hollywood, and they are more popular than anything on the planet. So let's focus on the thing you hear a lot. Except the that, except hear. when when uh, excuse me, except when American or Hollywood when they make something that is uh, you know historical movie or historical like, like Game of Thrones, Thrones series yeah. something they they tend to be more British than than American. Yes, you find American actors go in Game of yeah. Thrones and they do this old accent yeah. and stuff. Uh, but I always tell people, you have an advantage. You have American movies. You have American singers. Why don't you do like them? Why don't you start working and repeating after them? Because British is not really what you watch the most. And another important fact, British is very hard. It's not... Yeah. I think I uh... can you guys still hear us? Can you still hear me? Because I think I lost uh, teacher Adams here. Don't know what's the problem. I just can't hear. Teacher Adam, I don't know if uh, it's my from my side or from his. Can you guys still hear me? We don't hear you. You don't hear me, or you don't hear Teacher Adams. Mm, seems like there is an internet problem. Teacher Adam left i think he's got some issues regarding his uh, his internet connection anyways so waiting for our our guest to join again we were speaking about pronunciation and accent and um, teacher adams raised a very important uh, issue which is um which do we tend to focus more on is it the american or the british and uh, as he said we have more American accent, sorry, more American content than we have, uh, than we have a uh, British one. So that's why people, they tend to, um, to like the American accents more. So of course, this is not out of preference, but from, from teacher Adam's point of view, uh, British is harder. And um, yeah, he's going to join again and he's going to explain to us uh, more. Hello again. Yeah, screen. We've got a black screen. You can't see anything. So this is the point we were talking about, the point of um, American versus British. And of course, uh, Teacher Adams is specialized or he's focusing more in his lessons. Hello. I can't hear you. No, 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 but, but you guys, can you hear Teacher Adams or not? Yeah, there is no sound. No. You can hear me. Yes, uh, Nohela is saying to me the British accent is more uh, charming than the American. Yeah, charm is another... sign from my side oh, or there is a sound from my side can you hear it
Yeah, yeah. I can't hear Teacher Adams as well. I don't know if you can hear me, Teacher Adams, but if you can use some headphones or something, it would. I think it would change the situation. Yeah. Anyway, so um, tell us, guys, what you think about this uh, this topic. Like, do you prefer the American or the British more? Because it's a matter of preferences, um, I guess. It's not really like uh, which is better. Is it the American or the people? They ask me which should I go for. Is it uh, American or British? I don't think it it should be like this. Uh, you. Don't choose like because this is better than 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 the other accent. Like uh, it's a matter of preference. It's it's what you love to listen to. Like you can just go and listen to whatever you want. Like if you prefer the American more, you can go and listen to something American, movie that is American or something. If you prefer the British, you can focus on the British accent. So it's a matter of preference. It's never it's never who's better. Okay, we, because uh, normally we never compare uh, accents. We never say that an accent is better than this accent. It's just a matter of preference. It's like it's musicality, like uh, what you find charming, what you love to listen to, what you enjoy speaking, what you enjoy, you know, when you hear someone talking. Yeah, of course, uh, Nuhaila, it's a subjective uh, choice. Like you can't really like uh, choose based on um, it's a, just a matter of preference and you should like um listen to i, I listen to both you know i um, and um i don't see that my my pronunciation or my accent is 100 percent american or 100 percent british it's just mixed between the two and uh yeah i can just pick from the two I can talk some words in American. The, my R may be uh, American. Uh, my T may be sometimes British. So it depends. Yeah, Teacher Adams. Yes, I can hear you. I guess you've got some internet connection issues. I no? believe there is some sort of an issue. I restarted yeah. the router. I hope it's not going to happen again. So uh, just yeah. make sure people hear me because I saw some people in the comments. They said that they could yeah. not. Can you guys hear now me? Now I can hear you. Yes. Like now I can hear you. you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they said that yeah the they first time I could. couldn't hear you. The first time I couldn't hear you, and they said also that they they couldn't. But now I guess it's it's good. Right. So we were talking about this uh, this topic of the American and the British, and you're saying yeah. like that there are more American contents than British yes. ones. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. you know, I heard you say it's a matter of preference. It's exactly you find some people who love British and they're going to go yeah. after, although they watch a lot of British mm -hmm. stuff. But what is mm -hmm. the easier way? What is the more common way? American. Go for it. Imitate. Practice. Yeah. Write down notes. Go to websites and listen to any word you're not sure this is the right way to pronounce it or not. Because this is what stops people in interviews. You want to say something, but you're like, oh, I'm not sure it's pronounced that way. And you stop and you think, and by that, people look at you and say, oh, that person is not confident mm -hmm. or they're not fluent. So listen, and I recommend two websites. The first one is called the freedictionary.com. This is an amazing website yeah. only for yeah. English pronunciation. It's for English, British pronunciation. Uh, meaning, definitions, uh, synonyms, antonyms, legal uh, English, business English, medical English. Mm -hmm. It has it all. So for anybody who doesn't yeah. know that, thefreedictionary.com. This is one of the best ones. And the other one is uh, dictionary.cambridge.org. And some people say, uh, this is British, right? No, they have both versions. Dictionary. Yeah, they have the American and the, yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I do agree yeah. with you, Mr. Abrazak. It is a matter of preference. If you love something, go after it. Just master an accent and start practicing the pronunciation, mm -hmm. of the words you could say in that accent. Uh, and don't say to yourself, oh, uh, if I speak like that in front of my friends, they make fun of me and they tell me, well, come on, man, don't twist your tongue. Mm -hmm. Those friends don't pay your bills. Those friends don't get you a job. Yes. Those friends don't get you promoted at work. So the ball is in your court. Yeah. So, uh, in your opinion, Teacher Adam, since you focus more on pronunciation, like, is there any any, or do you consider that pronunciation or accent is something um, that is biological? I mean, 
like some people, even if they try really hard to to make their their, their pronunciation better, they they fail sometimes, or they fail in pronouncing some sounds the correct way. Um, taking the example of the Good. P what? sound in uh, in some Arabic countries in the Gulf, especially, the P is B. It's not P. It's yeah. B. And even they try harder and harder to to make it pay, they fail. Do you think it has to do with with where you come from, or it is something that we can really mm. work on and improve? I would take the other one. It's something that could really work on and improve, and it's a matter of you know really wanting it badly. Because I remember teaching students, and I say like. TH as an example, there are 13 rooms in this house. The house had three bathrooms. Like I give you a full sentence with TH and they would say mm -hmm. there are 13. I say, no, it's there. And he would keep saying there. And yeah, then yeah. One, time he would, one time he would do like there. I said, yes, that's the right way. That's the right way. Keep it. Mm -hmm. And then the next time there, I like, you know, come on. Next time I'm going to see you. I'll give you a chance to practice it. And next time I'll see you. So you find someone who comes back and really practiced and did it and told me it was hard to do it. And you find someone else who's like, oh, mister, I tried, but I couldn't. It does not, you know, like, I'm not going to say 100%, but it doesn't really matter where you come from. It really, really matters how you listen, because listening is the most important skill in the four skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. How you listen and how you, you know, impact yeah, sorry, not impact, what's the word, for the lack of a better term, how you implement the thing you listen to. It's all implement, about that. Yeah. My teacher told me p, p, and b, b, and got you the paper p, and b. I need to try that. I need to go with this. I can't give up. I can't say, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. In my country, you don't say that. Mm -hmm. In my country, you don't have this. No, it's not about that. If a Chinese or a Japanese mm -hmm. person could be fluent in English, you can because their language is very yeah. hard when it comes to you know, moving your tongue and moving your mouth and everything else. Uh, excuse me, uh, um, Teacher rest. Adams, uh, you, you're, you're a little bit breaking up. You're breaking up, and I don't know if the, like it's really difficult to hear you. I don't know uh -huh. if it's an internet connection or other problems I'm not sure about. I don't think there is a problem right now. I I actually joined with a much yeah. better. So uh, what about now? I I can hear you, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. Go on, go on. I, I was just I would like to raise like a small point. Like some yes. people, they have different opinion about this. They say, to... yeah. One last thing I wanted to say about this part is the R sound. Yes. How do you say the R, mm -hmm. Mister? I, I I don't hear you say it like red. No, I say red. Because your R has Rah, to be yeah. R. R. This is a yep. way of practicing. I have the same tongue that you do. So you can't look at me and say, oh, I can't say it. My country, is it's the same tongue. Unless you have like a, a list problem or something with all due respect. But like you could do it. And yep. some people do it, some not. So it's a matter of trying and how badly you want it. Yes. Yeah, you know, th there is a different opinion concerning this point of pronunciation. Um, there are some people who, who consider that uh, we as non-native speakers of English, we are not really supposed to have the accurate or 100% the accurate pronunciation um, since we're, they say, since we're understood and we speak and other people can understand what we want to say, they say that's enough, that's really enough because why caring about having the really accurate American pronunciation? And after all, we are just in our country, like trying to use English. I'll tell you what. Yeah. It depends on, mm -hmm. depend on what job you have. Are you an English teacher? Oh, you need this accurate. Yes, accent. of course. Hey, are yeah. you a translator in a conference? Do you stand in front of a camera and translate live in front? Of, oh, you need this accurate accent. You need it. What about, are you a coordinator yeah. on a computer and you rarely speak, but you normally write very good emails? Oh, it's okay, fine. But if you want it, you could get it. So I think it depends on the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and depends on like, job. Like, <laughs> yeah, like if you just, if you just looking for a uh, business English, maybe, is it really important? Business English? Yeah, if you're using it in, at your work, like, uh, 
writing yes, emails, but, maybe sometimes know, attending some everything. conferences or something. Yeah, business English is everything, but let's go inside of it. As I said, you are a translator in a conference and you translate between, you know, like ministers or whatever. Your accent has to be on point. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that minister cannot suffer because you are mispronouncing words, but you are a fluent speaker. So it depends. I need my accent to be perfect to get that job and get that salary mm -hmm. and be, you know, qualified or you know what I mean? Like there is a place called uh, teleperformance. If you if you know that place, they, they mm -hmm. answer calls in English and stuff. Someone told me they are yeah. looking for very good speakers, literally, not like native call not centers, like call native. centers. Yes, very good. This place, mm -hmm. like they answer calls yeah. in English, but they are looking for very good speakers, not amazing, excellent, like native speakers. So it depends yeah, on yeah. the job. It depends on what you want. Do you want to sound yeah. like this or do you want to sound like that? Yeah. And it's actually a, a great thing to have uh, to work on your pronunciation because after all, that's what people will see or that's what people will sometimes will judge you based on. Like uh, first thing, you may have great vocabulary. You may be great writer. But when it comes to, to, to speaking, uh, people will hear you the first time and they may get a bad impression on you. Exactly. What I mean? It's the first thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. You start. Yeah. The first thing you say, you are pronouncing things right now. People look at you and they're like, oh, that's good. Oh, oh, oh that's bad. So, yeah, it is the first thing before you even complete one sentence. Yeah. Uh, let's see if um, I've got, I've received actually some questions, but um, some of them we really answered them. Like, uh... Uh, this is a question from someone. He's saying, could you provide us with some steps we can follow to achieve fluency? Like, uh, fluency. What, that's a big, actually a broad question, yeah, very broad. Yeah. <laughs> so we are speaking about pronunciation, but you want to get something related to fluency, here you go. Uh, number mm. one, let's think about it. Why you're not fluent? Why you stop a lot when you speak? Oh, you, you translate. Uh, stop translation because you're not a translator, mm -hmm. you can be a speaker. So do not speak, speak, speak. There is one word that you stop, boom, you want to translate it or you can't yeah. remember it. Why not explain it in a different way? So first step, how to become fluent, you got to have the mentality of I'm going to be fluent. Hey, I'm speaking mm -hmm. right now with Mr. Abdul Razak and I want to tell him, uh, you know, the word advanced levels but I don't know the word advanced, okay? I'm a student yeah. and I don't know it or I can't remember it. So I will tell him, mm -hmm. I, I want to improve myself and reach the, the, oh. A very good is, level, for example. You mentality. have just the word, very good. Yeah, do something else if you want to yeah. be fluent. Explain it in English. So Mr. Abdul Razak, I want to improve myself and reach the, the, the high levels, like to be in a high level. Yeah. Uh, to be, yeah. you know, like in, in a over, you know, medium level. Now I explain yeah. the word advanced, you know. So number one, have the mentality of no translation. I'll explain in English. I will not stop in front of everybody mm -hmm. and for seconds. Number two, you need to believe in yourself more when it comes to two things. So you would be fluent. One, your pronunciation. If you pronounce really mm -hmm. good things, and you really get it right, you're going to be confident to speak. If you're not, you're going to all the time try to make things short and not pronounce anything because you know you're going yeah. to make mistakes. So work on your pronunciation to get yourself more self-confidence. And number two, also to get yourself more self-confidence is content. You need more vocab only? No. Yes. Expressions only? No. Idioms. Vocabulary. Idioms, yeah. Expressions. Idioms. That's but idioms comes third, like. as you said. This is the order. Mm -hmm. Idioms come third. Yes, you know. Oh, no, I'm not going to. Yeah. Some people, I'm they gonna... focus on idioms first and they yes. forget no, vocabulary no, no, no. and expressions. To be honest with you, to be honest with you mm. I'm not going to put them in order. One, two, three. Hey, you want to study vocab, mm -hmm. expressions, and idioms, you got to study them at the same time. I'm not saying study all the vocab and then study all the... No, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. It comes by practice, whether inside a course I took today, 10 words and five expressions and three idioms, or whether I'm watching a movie and, oh, 
look at this idiom, that's amazing, I'm gonna write it down, you know, or whether I record stories and I open the voice recorder to use all the vocab I learned and stuff like that and all the idioms. So it doesn't really matter the order, study vocab. By that I mean, number one, synonyms, study more meanings, because how many times yeah. you watched a movie and you did not understand that the word peculiar means strange or the word uncanny yeah. means strange, or the word mm -hmm. humongous, ginormous mean huge. So study mm -hmm. synonyms. This is important if you want to get vocabulary, improve your pronunciation, have the mentality of a fluent person and not stopping and translating. Those are the three steps I recommend to anybody who wants to become fluent. Yeah, that's amazing. Actually, it's, it's really uh, interesting. Like these are uh, really practical uh, steps like we can use. Um, someone's asking here, are you asking about your origin? Are you uh, Arabic or? I'm American Egyptian, half American, half Egyptian. I've been living here for about yeah. 14 years in Egypt. Prior to that, I mm -hmm. was in the States and I've lived in many countries, Emirates, KSA a lot. Yeah, great. So, uh, so you lived in the USA like for quite a long time. Not really, you know, consistently long, but like I went three years and traveled. I went two years and traveled. Like my parents were traveling abroad, so I went really a lot with them here and there. And I settled in Egypt after, you know, yeah, coming here 2006, then 2010. And I've been here like for about 14 years in there. But I've lived in California for some time. Of course, that impacted me without a doubt. But, you know, mm -hmm. having a mother at home who speaks English all the time helps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you speak both languages, which which you think is an advantage, of course. Uh, again, please, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you, the fact that you speak two languages, Arabic and English, it, you think it's a, yeah, a yeah, really I big advantage. Fluently, and I speak. I do speak Spanish, by the way, and French as well. Yeah, uh, amazing. Yeah, I'm not fluent in French, but I'm on that. You know, a little bit close in in Spanish. I like languages. Uh, if I mm -hmm. had more time, I would have learned more. But like. You know, English, Arabic, I'm fluent. Spanish, I'm pretty good at it. I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. And French, learning some stuff here and there. Yeah, but a question like uh, that I received from, from, from teachers. Some teachers, uh, especially, I don't know, in Egypt, maybe in other countries, they adopt this method of using the, the native uh, language, the L1, uh, in teaching English. Do you agree with this? Or you think that teaching English or teaching a foreign language should be like 100%? The target language. I'm sorry, I don't really get the question. Can you read? Again? Some teachers they use the, the 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 first they use the the native language. Like for example, if you are in Egypt, you use yeah. Arabic to you explain English, but I would use Arabic in my explanation. Yes, like to explain vocab not. to. Absolutely yes, not. not even with beginners. I know your opinion about this. You know, I just wanted you to clarify it because I've seen your videos. You try yeah, to definitely. use 100% English, and this is amazing, actually. This is actually one of my point of view as well. I used to meet people, and, and you know, like, when I used to work for centers and academies, and they used to go to the counter. They are, like, level one general, and they are, like, pointing mm -hmm. at me. The, the, the receptionists are pointing at me like, that's your teacher. So those guys, they watch me in videos and stuff there, and they're like, hey, he doesn't speak Arabic. He doesn't speak Arabic at all. And she's like, mm -hmm. no, no, don't worry. He's going to get you. And they're like, no, we're not going to understand. And then they came to the class. I started working, no word in Arabic. And they came and actually told me that story. We were out, and the receptionist and pointed. Mm -hmm. and I said, what did you think, guys? They said, we thought we would never understand. I said, because you want to hear me translate. But when you didn't mm -hmm. hear me translate, you were, didn't hear any word from me in Arabic. You were forced to think in English and respond in yes. English. If you don't use your tongue, you mm -hmm. will use your, language, your body language. If you don't know anything at all, you will go Google it and come next time and try to say it in English. Yes. That's the point. Yes. So you mm -hmm. got to have the teacher. You got to have this idea of I'm in class speaking English. There is no Arabic. If it's Arabic, my first language or anything else, mm -hmm. there is nothing like that at all. Because once you give the students that space that we could translate, trust me, they're going to go home and work as translators. Everything you give them is going to be translated. Yeah. But once you put in them, hey, we're here speaking, responding, thinking in English, 
step by step, the grammar mistake is going to get better. The pronunciation is going to mm -hmm. get better. Their confidence, they're going to say to themselves, the first session, I was not speaking with the mister uh, very quickly, but now I am because uh, he speaks with me and I understand him. Like, you will give them confidence, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's about the teacher. Some teachers, to be honest with you, would take the easy way. It's like, oh, gosh, it's too hard to explain things in English all the time. No, no, no. Yeah. I will use Arabic. And explain. That's you know what know teachers I mean? do. Normally, they get lazy. Because the would, teaching is the using the Arabic language is the easiest way. Yes, I was the supervisor yeah. in Reach Out Academy from 2016 to 19. So I used to train teachers from all over the world. Some teachers followed that idea in English only. And some others, they were like, okay, they would say it in Arabic. And I say, no, you can't do that. And then they look at me and say, but I'm trying to make him understand. I said, he could go do it on a dictionary and translate. So you're, you're, you're telling him the easy way, which is what he could do. He could go translate it. You should give him the meaning in English and make that brain mm -hmm. go think in English. And next time he comes, you revise with him that word. You tell him what's the meaning of that word. And he tells you back in English. And then you look at him and tell him, here we go. You are now explaining things to me in English. That's a boost of confidence in every student. That's a boost of confidence. Yeah, it's, even, it's even when you explain Yes, you know, I it's even when you explain a word, when you explain a word in English, you're teaching the, the student more than the word, like uh, you're, te you're teaching, maybe you're teaching him other expressions. Like if you're going to, uh, if the student asks you about the word cats and cats, and you say cat is qitta or uh, something in Arabic, you explain it in Arabic, you give him the word, he's going to learn one word. But if you try and give him like a uh, uh, cat is a pet something that we adopt at home, something, he will get more. Yes, yes. Sometimes yeah. you would yeah. tell them a word as an example, like, uh, you know, I would tell them uh, a luminary, you know, they would say, what is mm -hmm. a luminary? I would say a luminary top of his field. Number Number one, at the top of his field, like, you know, when I tell them uh, Dwayne Johnson in acting or something. So they say, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I tell them someone at the pinnacle. Do you know the meaning of pinnacle, guys? And they say, no. I say yeah. the top of everything. So everybody starts writing pinnacle. You know what I mean? So from yeah. one thing, you yeah. can give another yeah. if you use English, English. But you use English, Arabic, you are taking the easy way as a teacher and you're not really helping the student. Yeah. That's, that's really amazing. So um, really exceeded the time we agreed on. It's been like, uh, I guess, 45 minutes approximately. Yeah, so time like off. flies very yeah, quickly. Yeah, I really enjoyed talking to you. And um, it's been really helpful, I guess, for uh, people who are watching and people who would watch the live later. Um, thank you so much. Um, I hope, I really hope that we can like go live hear, again. You, again you, know, you have to meet again and take questions from people. We have problems with the live yes. today, but we could do it again. And I hope you guys understood and had fun. I hope you heard me this time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Teacher Adams. And um, have a great night. Sorry to keep you awake. I don't know if you sleep early, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, too. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Have You're welcome. Bye-bye. See you guys. Goodbye. So, um, everyone, that was the live we had with Teacher Adams, some internet uh, connection issues, but still we, we were able to uh, finish it and have some really amazing information. And it was really fruitful, full of um, tip, tips and full of um, advice, pieces of advice, which, we, which you can use, guys, to improve your pronunciation. Of course, Teacher Adams, I'll try to... Uh, to invite him maybe to another live and um, this live will be saved don't forget to go like it put some comments on it so that more people can see it and soon maybe tomorrow or after tomorrow will be uploaded to YouTube so that everyone can watch it and um, thank you so much and have a great night goodbye